Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to the MacBrick Studio. We're here in the studio in uh, Digital Barn in Prescott, Arizona. <laughs> You know, it doesn't matter. It's a green screen. Who cares? Right. Right? We could be anywhere. Well, we could be anywhere. <laughs> uh, so we're going to be talking about the new features in Final Cut Pro 10.1.2 specifically. Media management, major yeah. changes there. Yeah. So Mark's going to walk us through the essentially key three changes, right? Yeah. Sort of three. There's a lot of to talk about. There's a lot of changes in 10.1.2. And over the next few MacBreak Studios, we're going to be diving into various features. But the biggest thing really relates to media management. And you might say, well, wait a minute. Didn't media management just change in 10.1? They're refining it. They are. They are. So we introduced a library model, which is mm -hmm. fantastic. But there are some changes here uh, that are very interesting, and I think they are uh, good refinements. You know, Apple keeps tweaking, making things a little better. So the first thing I want to talk about is they've changed the way that you establish the import options for a library. Uh, change. When you say change like in big changes? Or? Well, let me just show you. I think the easiest thing is to show you. So what I'm going to do, I'm here in Final Cut. I'm going to create a new library. I have one open, but I'm just going to create a new one to see what happens. So I'm going to say new library, and I'm just going to call it uh, MBS. Uh, for MacBreak Studio. And then MM for Media Management. So this is my little library. I'm just going to save it in a folder here. You know, as usual, you can save libraries wherever you want. As soon as I save it, notice something the inspector popped open. A little window that wasn't there before yeah, is so, now there. Yeah, and it's the inspector. And it's, you know, if I can click it to open and close, it is the inspector, but it popped open by itself as soon as you create a library. And there's a whole new pane here called library properties. So this whole pane is new. And it establishes for you exactly what's going on with um, storage locations for everything. Yeah, so let's, let's overview it here. At the very top is the name of your library and the name of the drive that it's located on. So right away, you know where it's located. In fact, if you move your mouse over it, the tooltip will uh, give you more information about that library. Uh, not much, just the name, of the name of the library, but the tooltip will come in more handy later here. Underneath it here, we have storage locations. So check this out. It's broken into um, three primary locations here. We've got media, cache, and backups, okay? So media means uh, the media that you're going to bring into your library. So anything you import, video, still images, photos, Clips, graphics, anything, anything yeah. can, constitutes media. Yeah, anything that you're going to import, that's that d tells you right here where it's going to go. And by default, it's going to go in the library, which if you've already been using Final Cut Pro 10.1 or you've been watching our tutorials, you know that that is called... A managed library. A managed library, right. All the media that you import will be copied into the library. The second thing is called the cache. And the cache is the repository for... Your bank account. Your bank account, your cache, right? C-A-C-H-E. Um, and, and the cache is where you have all your render files are stored, mm -hmm. right. all your analysis files, optical flow, stabilization, uh, thumbnails, uh, waveforms. Uh, waveforms, all of those things. Constitute that are cache. Ca cache, and they're stored by default in the library as well. And then finally, where your backups are stored, which by default is this Final Cut backups folder in your movies folder. So it's and a local if, drive. It's a local drive. In fact, if you do uh, move the cursor, tip. there's your tooltip. If you move the cursor over each of these, it'll tell you the exact path of uh, the library. Um, no, it's actually showing you the path of your media there, isn't it? Well, here it's showing the path of this library. Oh, so you see MM FCP ah, bundle. So it's yeah. showing the path of the actual library. And uh, down here is media locations, but we don't have any media yet. Okay, there's nothing in here yet. So this shows you where things are going to be stored by default and allows you to change it. Okay, so um, that's the first change and we'll, we'll work with it in just a minute. But the second change is that you can now take any transcoded media, meaning optimized media or proxy media, and you can store it wherever you want. Wait, okay, so previously, to this version, all the proxy and transcoded had to be stored in the library. No matter what, it was inside so the, the library. So the library can get huge, even right. if your original media is somewhere else. Even if you chose to store your media somewhere else or leave it in place. Right. That's, yeah. a, that's a pretty yeah. big change. It's a big change. And the key benefit to that is if you are storing your media externally, then it allows you to have a very, very small uh, library. The library. library can be very yeah. tiny that you can pass back and forth. Yeah, because it's just pointing to the media. And so for if you are in a shared environment, either locally or remote, you can pass this small library back and forth and people can access, uh, it'll point to the media. 
So I want to demonstrate exactly what that happens. In fact, if you look very close, it's very tiny here, but you look, media includes imported files, proxy and optimized files, and consolidated files. Okay, so I want to demonstrate how it actually can include that proxy and, console and um, optimized media when it's not in the library. So how do you change this? Uh, that's what this modify settings button is about and it allows you to change these targets. So if I click on it, we get a window that lists these same three areas, media, cache, and backups. Okay. And so what I'm going to do for media, I'm going to go to choose and I'm going to place the media instead. I'll just place it in this same folder I have here and I'll create a new folder and I'll call it uh, my media. And this could be folder could be just anywhere. Anywhere. Anywhere, right. You're creating an external folder for your media outside the library. Yeah. So, and you might want to do this. I mean, our general recommendation is use a managed library if you're a solo editor. But if you're going to need to share your project with other editors, you probably want your media external. That's right. So I'm targeting a store location. Off, you might want to run a separate drive, a RAID or, or what have you. So I'm going to do that. I'm not going to change anything else from now. I'm going to say, okay. And we can see that we've now targeted this external My folder. folder right. right. So now if I go to import a clip, let me select the event here. And if I go to import a clip into this event, I'll go to um, the desktop on this drive here and I have a clips folder. And here I have a clip. And what I'll do, I'll choose to import. And here we'll see the natural consequence of the fact that we now decide where the import happens up front. Okay, and that consequence is we can no longer make that decision here. Right, where previously you could actually do in library, out of library, right here yeah. in this window, but no, Every no time. longer. Exactly. Right. Every time you imported, you had to think, okay, am I going inside the library, outside the library? No longer. Now we can see the files are targeted, copy to library storage location, my, my media. media. Now, yep. if you didn't target an external folder like you did, it would just say copy to library. Copy to library, right. So this is fixed to whatever you set in the library properties. Got it. So that's a pretty big difference. You always still have this option down here to leave in place. Even if you are internal or external, you can always leave media where it is. And that can be a little bit confusing. So I'm just going to say right now, like we go into much more depth on this whole thing in our media management tutorial. That's right. Uh, so I, I would advise checking that out. In fact, the whole first lesson is, is free and it goes into great deal on this. But right now I'm just going to copy that clip to my storage location. So I'll click import. Actually, I want to do, I didn't transcode the media, but it's okay because I can do it after the fact. I wanted to check the transcode media checkbox right. there. So I'm going to do it after the fact, transcode media, and I'll choose to create proxy media for this one. I'll click OK. And we'll see down in the uh, progress dialog here. The background task yeah. window. So it's basically copying the clip to that external folder, and at the same time, it's going to be generating proxy media for that clip. And exactly. all of it will be in that external folder. Exactly. Okay, so now the, the, it's done copying the clip and transcoding the media. So if I right click on this clip and choose to reveal in Finder where we are taken to, let me open this up a little wider, is the My Media folder, right? So it put it into that external location. Not only that, here's a Final Cut Proxy Media folder and there's a proxy. Okay, so it put the proxy in that same external location instead of inside the library. And that's, that's huge, that's a big change. It is. Um, I notice there, there's a date stamp on each folder for the media. Yes, it puts, a, it puts it in a folder with a date stamp based on the creation date for that clip. Uh, and that's a, we'll actually talk more about that in another MacBook Studio because there's no renaming the file. So it has some organizational structure that's doing that. Uh, the third thing I want to mention is related to media management is if you've created optimized and proxy media in previous versions of Final Cut, uh, you couldn't delete that transcoded media without going into the package, going into the bundle, you know, right click right. and go in the bundle. Right. Now you can delete transcoded media directly inside Final Cut. That's fantastic. Okay, so, so that's a that. good thing. So I'll select uh, this uh, one I just created. And I'll go, oh, and by the way, actually I'll select this one because it has uh, some more projects and events in it. Uh, this works on the project level, the event level, or the whole library level. So if you select just a project and I go into the file menu, I can choose to delete generated project files. Okay? If I select the event, I can choose to delete generated event files. 
And then if I choose the whole library, I can choose delete generated library right. files. That's okay? probably the global one you want for everything. There. Yeah, usually I think it's where you're gonna go. And we've had something similar in previous versions that allowed you to delete render files. So I can check that and usually I would check, yeah, let's delete them all. Oh, right. I'm trying to free up disk space or if I'm not trying to free up disk space, if I wanna keep the existing render, I could just say unused, but I can choose all. But here, this is the big change. I can choose whether I wanna delete optimized or proxy or both right in Final That's Cut. That's nice. It's great, great way if you're, if you're finished with your optimized your proxy, you don't have no need for them anymore. If you're archiving, fantastic feature there. So just a quick introduction to the sort of high level changes to how Media, Media Manage changed in 10.1.2. Uh, right, fantastic changes, especially if you're working with other editors. Uh, being yep. able to have all that proxy transcoded outside the library. Yep. And, uh, and, and Mark, as Mark mentioned, we have this tutorial that goes through all these different workflow scenarios. You wanna check that out. In the meantime, I think we'll uh, look at the next thing in the next lesson, next Mac break. Yes. Um, make sure to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and uh, feel free to email us if you have, have specific questions. I want to thank you for watching another episode of Mac Break Studio. See you next time.